I greet every one of you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. God is good and His mercy endureth forever. Hallelujah. <coughs> Hope all of you enjoyed the celebration of Har Harvest Festival. Why we celebrate this festival every year? So we celebrate Harvest Festival every year. Why? There's a reason, no? To show our gratitude for his goodness and kindness. The festival is annual celebration around the time of main harvest occurs in September or October. Because in the January or February they sow the seeds, the farmers, and they get the crop in the month of September or October. So around the world and um, they celebrate this harvest festival in the month of September or October. Here we see God's unlimited kindness and mercy to his people. So God always, he shows his mercy and kindness and goodness to his people. In First Chronicles uh, 29 chapter, from verses 10 to 20, uh, we read that King David, he stands in the presence of the whole assembly and he is pray praising and praying for what God has done to build the temple. No? So one verse from 10 to verse, till 20 verses, the prayer was that, but I have chosen only one word that is <clears throat> verse 14. Praise be to you, O Lord God, our Father Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. There is no end to our God. He is an everlasting God. But who am I and who are my people that we should be able to as generously as this? Now God is so gracious to him because he believed a Lord God and Lord God was with David wherever he went. He gave him victory with that and he wanted to build the temple. So with a much gratitude, David, King David, he was praising and praying. Both he is doing and everything comes from you and we have given you only what comes from your hand. So we don't have anything but when God gives us, again we are giving him back to him. No, what can we give to him except only we can say thank you Lord. No, the whole year God has protected us and he led us and he blessed us. Because of his grace only we are alive today. And one more time God has given us the grace to celebrate the harvest festival this month, uh, today only. So all of you have enjoyed, no, today. And in Deuteronomy uh, chapter 26, from <coughs> verses 1 to 11, here we read that Israel, Israelites, when they returned to promised land, the land of honey and milk flowing, so the Lord God has brought them out of the slavery, from out of Egypt to the promised land, Canaan. And there they settled very well and grow crops and fruits and bearing fruit bearing trees. In Genesis 15 verse 14, from 14 to 18 when we read, there Lord God, he has made a covenant with Abraham. So when you read those verses, you'll know he made a covenant with Abraham and he said on that day he made a covenant with Abraham and they will be strangers and they'll be slaved and mistreated for 400 years. 
so when abraham uh, was there and god has given him a promise so the israelites they'll be they'll go to that uh, uh, egypt to be slaves for in that country which they do not know that country there you know but god before 400 years before itself god has promised to abraham that i will bring them back to their land the land which flows the honey and milk and so the israelites they have reached that promised land and they grow and they are very well blessed and they grow the crops and the fruit bearing trees and in, with that uh, thanksgiving they have brought the crop to the presence of god so the israelites remembering how they were mistreated and how they have suffered there in the egypt they couldn't bear that uh, slave slavery and they couldn't bear that work so harshly they were treated the uh, egyptians the israelites were very sad and they couldn't bear that and they they cried out to the lord and god heard their groaning they started groaning when we will be delivered when we will be saved by the lord god so god had that groaning and he remembered the covenant which he made with their father with their forefathers then the lord brought them out of egypt with his mighty and outstretched arm with great terror he didn't bring uh, the uh, israelites simply out of egypt but with his mighty and outstretched arm with great terror and with miraculous signs and wonders so all this we read in exodus and in deuteronomy you know so how god has brought them out of egypt so with his mighty hand he brought them out and he stretched forth his arm his hand and he brought them out not simply but with a great terror the egyptians were afraid when they see that miracles and the wonders what god is doing for the israelites so with thankful heart they bought the first fruit of soil which god gave them and bow down before them so all that they were remembering how they were treated in the egypt egyptians they have treated him but when god has brought them to the promised land they settled very well in that canaan and with thanksgiving they brought that fruit before god and bow down before them so they humble themselves before god so we, today we have celebrated the harvest festival and our church members they are very very enthusiastic and very interested and they have participated they bring cakes and eatables tasty dishes and offerings and jewels and they gave everything whole heartedly to church on the day to show their gratitude for all the blessings god has given to our families so every family in the church here in egmore wesley church we know how much we are blessed you know if i want to tell my children um, here only they brought up and they were with the sound knowledge of word of god they were brought up here and the settled so also every family of this egmore wesley church we have seen the goodness and the kindness of the lord god all through the years hallelujah glory to jesus and for all the blessings god has given with that gratitude only we all gathered here today and we show our love 
and our gratitude to god no and so we have given people they gave offerings and one tenth of day of salary and everything with uh, without any hesitation they have given to god in return what the church did again we have give god has given to us and again we are giving to god the church pastor and the committee members and the elders of the church they have decided with that money we have constructed the churches where there is no church in the villages no so every once in two years they used to build a church in outskirts of uh, chennai and uh, i w- i went to near chengalpet not proper chengalpet but uh, from there i think uh, 50 kilometers interior interior of that village a um, very small church 100 years old church is there and a small school so that time the missionaries when they came india so they want to uh, uh, spread the gospel of god so they have chosen that place and when we are going in the van itself um, i i uh, i couldn't understand how the missionaries they have come there in that time just imagine 100 years back how the place will be no current no electricity no proper facilities and uh, only um, uh, that um, lamps ca- lamps only kerosene lamps and uh, only bullock carts but with all that the missionaries who came they sacrificed their life and somehow they want to uh, spread the gospel of god to those people very small village very small church not even 50 people they could sit i don't know and a small school so our church they have selected that place and our church because of all the people they gave generously with that money we have uh, they have built a church there and a school and another one um, near satyavedu in andhra so that small in a satyavedu church is there one small school and it's about to fall that also 100 years old so with that money again the church took that project and they uh, renovated that school and from there or 10 kilometers away from that place and one old church is there so again they have constructed that church so when god is giving and the church is uh, doing that constructing the churches and building the churches to spread the gospel so in return what we are doing god is blessing us so what we are doing people are enjoying the blessings of god by worshiping there in their churches i praise god for that and when we read it in 1 timothy verses from 6 to 12 verses here the apostle paul is speaking to timothy uh, in this chapter uh, duty of the servants and verse 6 we read contentment and verse 9 the riches and 11 and 12 warning to ministers those who are doing the ministry he is uh, i mean even though he is speaking to timothy but he is speaking to us also how to be in the ministry of god here paul is giving instructions not only to timothy but also for us and are you content with the necessities of life or must god give you luxuries what we are thinking are we content with what we have or we are expecting more luxuries in our life but in verse 17 the word of god says god wants you to enjoy his gifts 
and employ them for the good of others the word of god says he is giving all the gifts enjoy the enjoy in your life with your family with your children make them to study higher studies and build the house everything god is providing us but one thing we have to remember to enjoy his gifts and em- employ them for the good of others are we doing that but be- beware when you heart is setting on getting rich so let us not put the our hearts on the riches but the god he is giving us to enjoy in the world but are we using and more only what what else uh, you are having to spend so the word of god says to help others in verse 6 godliness with contentment is a great gain into this world we didn't bring anything and from this world we can't take anything out let us be content with what we have he will provide what all we need you know all our needs will be met by god to the glorious riches in his to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus so god knows our needs so when we look at him and when we believe him so he says in verse 6 godliness with contentment so let us be content with what we have and god he will meet all our needs in Christ Jesus you know and he gives us to enjoy his gifts and if we have more uh, let us use for others say so last month we celebrated mission sunday in month of july we have celebrated uh, mission sunday again our church has come forward and they worked hard and they raised the funds and because our diocese they are sending the missionaries and the evangelists to different places so that money will be used for them to go and help the people to receive the word of god and uh, the evangelists and the missionaries they are serving the lord and to some to the villagers or to interior places also they may go so there they will have all the facilities but still because they want to serve the lord somehow the people all all the people must uh, receive the word of god and they must walk into the light of the uh, god no say so they must know that jesus is the living god so for that uh, they must receive the salvation of god no so with that intention the missionaries and the evangelists they are going out our diocese are sending so we have celebrated in month of july so the word of god the people we help them very soon so um, the good news reach the people who have not heard because jesus is coming soon so by that time let all the people should hear the word of god they must accept jesus christ as their savior and in verse 12 warning to ministers so here paul says let us pursue not the money not the riches but let us pursue righteousness godliness faith love and endurance and gentleness all these are characteristics of jesus christ so when we commit ourselves especially this uh, 11 and 12 he is speaking to the ministers those who are doing the ministry so let us have seek or let us follow the righteousness of god at godliness and faith and love and endurance and gentleness we must have but why only one day we leave this earth and will go where will go into the eternal kingdom of god so to enter into that um, ministers are those who are ha- those who worship the lord those who are saved by the blood of jesus christ 
we must have all these qualities or characters of God. So I, heard, I read a small story, a father and son. So one day that father, he, he made a small boat uh, with, wood, with wood and he gave to his son to play that. So every evening they may go to seashore and there the child will be playing. So one day as they were playing, the waves came up, came up and it pulled the two, um, small boat into the water. So the son, he started crying and uh, father, he con consoled him and said, I will make another boat. But he said, no, I want that same boat, he said. So somehow they, he was comforted. After some days, again they were walking on the seashore there one man, he was selling the toys, you know, small toys for the children. So they went to see what toys are there. There the boy saw the same boat where he lost it in the sea. He found that. And he said, that's my boat, he said. Now, then give it to me, that is my boat, it belongs to me. But the shop owner, he never gave that uh, um, boat because he wanted the price for that. I can't give you freely. You pay for that boat and take the boat, he said. So they were bargaining, he was pleading, but he never come down that shop owner. So the father, what he has done, he gave the money and bought that boat and gave, to, gave it to his son. So I thought, maybe for the last souls, father has sent Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ has come down leaving all his heavenly realm and he lived in the midst of us as an ordinary man. Why? He wants to save every one of us by his precious blood. So he paid his blood as the ransom, as the price, as the price he paid and he bought us because we are saved and we are sitting here and uh, worshipping the Lord, it's only the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and love of God. God sent His only Son, that is in um, John 3.16 we read, no? because God loved the world so much, He gave His only begotten Son. So whoever uh, believes in Him, they will not perish, but they'll have eternal life. So we have that assurance because Jesus Christ has paid the uh, price, a ransom for us, his precious blood on the cross of Calvary and he bought us. So we have that assurance that we are saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And uh, when we think, but sometimes, I mean, he's speaking to ministers, especially to Timothy and to us. So when we feel it's too difficult to stand up for the Lord, remember how he stood for us, how much uh, Oh, insult, shame, everything he faced, Lord Jesus Christ, even though he is God Almighty, he is the creator of the universe, but still for you and me, he, he faced all those insults and shame for us. And above all this, we are celebrating. So with the hope, the next year, we are looking for that next year, the Harvest Festival, no? But above all this, uh, above, all of, above all this, let us praise and thank God for the unspeakable gift of Jesus for us. Amen. May God bless this one.